AquaKids has received the Parents Television Council seal of approval. On today's episode of AquaKids, we toured the Florida Oceanographic Coastal Center. So, you ready to make a difference? Building a better planet starts with you. AquaKids, AquaKids, traveling around the world. Going where we've never been before. Having fun and so much more. Learning from our friends on the sea. Saving them and down to you and me. AquaKids. This is a really cool facility, guys. Oh, yeah. Really cool that we're here. Where is this place located again? I think it's Hutchinson Island. The Florida Oceanographic Society was founded in 1964 as a way to study marine sciences and to communicate important messages of conservation and stewardship to the public. Part of the society is called the Florida Oceanographic Coastal Center, which rests along Florida's east coast on a beautiful 57-acre site. There you can find an array of exciting exhibits and a nature walk that meanders through the mangrove swamp. The Coastal Center believes educating visitors and local residents about our fragile ecosystems is the first step in helping to preserve it for future generations. We're here now with Michelle at the Florida Oceanographic Coastal Center, and she's an education and exhibit specialist here. So tell us a little bit about the touch pool behind us. Okay, um, here we have three species of local stingrays, uh, our cow nose, our southern, and our Atlantic. All three species are found in the warm coastal and estuarian waters of Florida. And they're all debarbed, right? Yes, uh, right. stingrays do have a barb, and uh, the barb is a projection on their tail, kind of like our fingernail grows on our finger, the barb grows off the tail, and it can be different places on different species. Uh, yeah. But we are able to clip them, and they do grow back, so our, uh, our aquarium staff takes very good care of uh, constantly debarbing Trims, them. Debarb yeah. Well, can we talk a little bit about this barb? Yes. Yeah. A uh, misconception that I had that I just recently realized is wrong is that I thought this actually detached. I knew there was venom surrounding it. I knew it had to be, but I thought the barb actually had to be injected into the prey item. Right. What happens is the barb has serrated edges. Uh, so if it goes in, it goes in smoothly. Coming out, it would tear. But it does contain a mild protein-based venom, which uh, causes the sting. Uh, so usually if a uh, stingray were to get stepped on, the bar being on the tail, it would whip up with the tail as a reflex reaction. Right. Uh, it's not a conscious action. It whips up reflex reaction and would go into uh, the closest part of the body and uh, would tear. And the thing you have to worry about more than the venom would actually be the bacteria growth mm -hmm. on the barb. Uh, so that's why they say go to the doctor, get an antibiotic, uh, because you never know what was growing on the barb. But that's not considered a, a usually lethal. Uh, it's not usually considered lethal. In some cases, that has happened. Right. But uh, for the most part, it would not be a lethal sting. OK. Sorry what? to interrupt. <laughs> so what do they eat? Um, stingrays, uh, they have very flat, plate-like teeth. And uh, their mouth is on the bottom of their body. So they use these flat, plate-like teeth for crushing uh, invertebrates. So they like to eat clams, crabs, uh, maybe some bottom-dwelling fish. Uh, but that's their main diet. And they're eating shell and all with those? Uh, they'll crush the shell and eat the animal wow. inside. Those are strong. And uh, <laughs> that's one reason we don't feed them the shells in here, because it would make a big mess. Right, <laughs> absolutely. Well, we're going to get a chance to feed today, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll get awesome. a chance to be trainers for the day here yep. at the Coastal Center. Cool. What do you feed? Uh, here we feed them fish, shrimp, and squid. And uh, so you would hold diet. your hand like uh, you would feed a horse so that they can suck it right out of your hand and feel that sucking like a vacuum motion. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. Awesome. It's really neat. Neat. Well, let's do it. You want to feed? Yeah, ready cool. to feed? Let's do it. Dinner is served, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, twice a day here. Uh, we do have public feedings. And uh, what we feed them is a little silver side fish, uh, cut up squid, and nice pieces of shrimp. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have flat hands. Again, their eyes are gonna be on top, their mouth is on bottom. So you wanna make sure to keep your thumb down so you don't get them sucking on your thumb. And uh, you'll have the food up like that and as far down as you can because uh, they are bottom dwellers. You guys are gonna go to the ledges. 
So I'm gonna bring one up to the window so you could see the mouth and the gills on the bottom. And also behind their eyes, you're gonna see little holes that look like they're blinking and those are their spiracles. It's a special adaptation to help them breathe uh, while they're buried under the sand. So uh, these are our cow nose, it looks like what's coming up. Let's see who will take the shrimp. See, and it's just a sucking motion. And awesome. you'll also cool. see two flaps on the front of their face. That's actually not their mouth. They use those flaps to move sand and push food towards their mouth. Huh. Very so. cool. Does their diet differ in the wild and in captivity? Are you feeding the same things? Um, we are feeding them a little bit different than what they would eat in the wild. Uh, cow nose especially love bivalves. Uh, in the wild, uh, scallops and oysters, things like that. Okay, to refresh, these stingrays have sucker mouths on the bottom, so we want to make that a lot easier for them to eat. We'll cater to that. So I'm going to put the fish positioned like this to make it easier for them to eat. And since their eyes are located on the tops of their heads, they're probably going to smell this more than they're going to see it. I can feel it crunching the whole thing. It's taking it little by little. Is that your last one, Kara? It is. Let's see who will take it. They're still hungry. Come along, little ones. So what are the status of stingrays in the wild? Um, stingrays are actually a data deficient species. Uh, so most of them have not acquired a status yet. Uh, so it's hard to put conservation efforts uh, towards them because uh, there is no conservation status. See, there's a great career. Collect mm -hmm. data for, his, <laughs> for exactly. stingrays. Later in the show, the kids try to loosen up as they snorkel with nurse sharks. But coming up next, meet an adorable green sea turtle awaiting his new home. Did you know that the Florida Oceanographic Coastal Center's mission is to inspire environmental stewardship of Florida's coastal ecosystems? It does this through education and research. Don't go away! Aqua Kids will be right back! <laughs>